Okay, great. So, hi guys. My name is Alish Nirvana, um, and my pronouns are she, her. I'm a Yes Program alumni, and I was in USA from 2017 to 2018. Um, I'm originally from Bangladesh, and I was I was placed in Hawaii. I got super lucky, I know. And um, currently, I'm in Canada in my second year of university. Um, so yeah, so today I'm just going to be talking about my exchange. It might be a little bit rambly because I tend to just like freestyle it when it's about my exchange year. I just have so much to say. But yeah, so glad everyone's tuning in. Um, so to begin, this is just a cool map of Bangladesh. We'll go into it a little bit later. And this is like the general shape I can draw from memory. Um, and this is our flag. Um, it's green and red. Um, so the green, it like signifies agriculture. It's like the green fields and the red is the rising sun. Um, and it also signifies like the blood of those who died for our independence. And um, our country's, my country's actually pretty young. We were only born in like 1971. My grandfather fought in the war. war and um, some of you might, you know, have parents or be born in 19 before or, um, you know, around 1971. Um, and this is just another variation of a flag we used. It's also super pretty. It's actually my favorite version. <laughs> um, so yeah, so looking closer at the map, um, as you can see, we have a lot of rivers. We have a lot of um, fishing is a big part of our culture. Um, we actually have a saying that's Mache Bhate Bangali. That means Bangalis, the people of um, the Bengali culture, Bangalis are fish and rice because rice is like our main carb. So here we might be like, you know, having a lot of bread or having a lot of potatoes. But for us, rice is like, you know, people have it three times a day. Um, like it's like the staple food. Um, and here I want to little, make a little distinction. Um, as you might have noticed, I said it's a Bengali person who um, has a lot of fish and rice. And I also said I'm Bangladeshi myself. So Bangali is a person who comes from the Bengali culture and Bangladeshi is a person who was born like from Bangladesh, the country. So you might see like a lot of Indian people who say they're Bangali, but they're Indian, but they're not Bangladeshi. So it's because, you know, like um, in South Asia, we have, we share a lot of our history. So a person might be Bangali from the culture and um, share a lot of cultural aspects, but might be from like a different nation. So yeah, that's like a question I, I get a lot. So I just wanted to, you know, clarify that. Um, but yeah, so moving on. So he, this is the world map, obviously. So you can see um, USA on the left side here and ba Bangladesh is super tiny, just next to India. It's like covered on, I think almost three sides. We have like a tiny strip on the top that's like, that only just separates us from Nepal. Um, we're surrounded on three sides and it's a pretty tiny country. Um, so, Bangladesh is only like 140,000 uh, kilometers square-ish, which is around for the Americans here in miles. I have it there. Um, um, so it's actually only the size of Iowa, but like a tiny bit bigger than Iowa. But the population, whereas like in USA, it's 32, um, 320 million. In Bangladesh, it's almost half. So it's 160 million. So that basically means there's like half the population in one um, sixty-six of the space, um, which also means there's like whenever you go to Bangladesh, you see a lot, a lot of, lot of people. So there's like a lot of buildings, a lot of people on the street, um, yeah, just everywhere basically. Um, and and then the fact that we have a lot of people also means that we have a super diverse culture, um, and we have a lot of indigenous people too. So we just have a lot of languages and a lot of dialects in um, Bangladesh itself. Um, so just to like point out a few on the map here, there's like um, there's Ashamese people, there's um, Sileti people, there's Chakma people, um, so lots of people, and. I personally think that the fact that we have such a diverse culture in such small spaces um, means that we all have to get together and it makes Bengali people all that more hospitable, I think. Whenever any foreigner, any of my friends have gone to Bangladesh, they've always talked about how welcoming everyone is. Um, and yeah, so moving on, talking about language, this is our, um, um, our alphabet. There's a lot of it. These top ones are like the basic letters and then you kind of like mix and match them and then they form some more. 
Um, and yeah, so this is how it's written. I usually, um, I personally think it's super pretty and I've actually made, when I was on exchange, I made a lot of friends through the language. Like I would offer to like write their names in Bangla for them and they think it's super pretty. And once you know it, we're talking and now we're friends, you know? Um, so I just wanted to read this out for you guys, just because a lot of people like um, hearing what a language sounds like. So this says, জীবন জ্ঞানীদের জন্য একটি স্বপ্ন পোকাদের জন্য একটি খেলনা ধনীদের জন্য রসান্ত কৌতক আর গরিবের জন্য দুঃখের আধার রিক্সাস Um, this is what it looks like. There's a person in the front pedaling and there's passengers in the back. It's actually kind of an eco-friendly way of getting around. Um, you could call it kind of like a tricycle, um, I guess, with the three wheels. Um, we use it all the time. Um, since there's so many people, cars on the street will like, it'll um, block up the street. So rickshaws are smaller and you can use them get, to get to um, locations that are closer. Um, and they're just a big part of the culture. We just use it every day all when I'm going to my classes, if I'm going to my classes and all that stuff. And as you can see, even just on the back, you can see our, how vibrant our culture is right on the back of the rickshaws with the art. It's so colorful. There's um, traditional um, types of sceneries with the house and the village and the, uh, and the um, peacocks and things. And yeah, so our, our art is super colorful. Um, here are some more um, examples. So this is just like a cultural scene, playing some music and dancing. Um, and then this is also super co colorful. This is based on our independence war. Um, and yeah, and then this is also a big part of our cultural events on the streets. Everyone will just go out and um, paint super cute. Um, so they might look like Mandela's, but we call them Alpona because they have some like super specific like um, designs that we, only we use. And you'll see them on the street everywhere. We actually, um, I think, have the world record for having like the longest alpona like on the streets. Like when I was in school, I'd draw them um, on the stairs in our, um, on like the playing fields um, when I was in school, whenever we had these festivals, super cool stuff. <laughs> so um, moving on, um, there's just so much about the culture. I just tried to fix up, uh, um, put some stuff in there, but yeah, I hope that gave you a little teaser. And hopefully someday you can come to Bangladesh and see it for yourself. Uh, so yeah, so here we go. So this is um, moving on to some stuff that's more like uh, related to my um, exchange years. Um, so when I went on exchange, I was in um, 11th grade. So I did my 11th grade in Hawaii. Um, and of course there are some, there are well, a lot of differences between school in USA versus school in Bangladesh. and um, Honestly, like I know there's like the whole um, language difference and all that, but most of the differences that stood out for me were like just the little things that like everyone takes for granted. So like uniforms, right? A lot like my school in Hawaii didn't have a uniform. We just wear whatever. There's like a dress code, but no set uniform. Whereas in Bangladesh, um, we have set uniforms. So like schools have colors and the guys would or always wear um, like shirts, pants, ties, and sometimes blazers in the winter. But you, that wasn't like forced because Bangladesh is a super hot country. So if you were wearing a blazer, you're probably melting under there. Um, for the girls, we have like a long tunic that goes down to your knees and you have like a collar sometimes, sometimes not. And we are a Muslim country. So sometimes uh, girls will just have like white hijab as part of their uniform. Um, and we all have a white like a shawl kind of thing that goes um, from your shoulders to your waist. And then it like is held fast with a belt. Um, and that kind of like reflects the fact that we all wear scarves and it's just a part of our culture. We think it's, um, it's kind of like signifies modesty and um, yeah, so that's basically one of the differences. So another difference that you might notice in the photo right here is that the class size is super big. So our class sizes can go from, you know, like small being like 30 to big being like hundreds, like more, um, more like a university lecture. Um, whereas in America, I think there was more of like a one-on-one -on -one class sizes to begin with. Whereas in Bangladesh, we would like 
get that one-on-one -on -one support outside of class. Um, and another big um, difference is students having to leave the room. Like in America, we would have to walk from like our math class to our English class, whereas in Bangladesh, we didn't move, the teacher moved usually. So we would just like get in in the morning, sit in our seats, we have our assigned seats and um, the teachers came on like to our math class and then we have a little break between periods and then the English teacher would walk in. Um, and then as a result of that, I think we don't really have like the locker culture where, um, so like we just have our bags, we have our heavy bags, but the thing is we're not moving. So we don't need to go to our lockers. Um, whereas in America, everyone has a locker. And I think that's like a really fun thing. Even when you're watching movies, you see like people decorating their lockers, but we're like, huh, okay, cool. Um, we don't have that. So we have like, we have like our decorating our classroom or decorating our desk kind of culture. Um, and the last type uh, thing difference I'll say is um, we have three types of different schools, whereas I think in America, there's like, you know, there's public school, private school, whereas in Bangladesh, it's more like um, the different schools have different languages. So like you can either study in Bengali, where um, in Bangla, where like, you like if you're studying geography or like um, math, you're doing it all in Bangla and you have English as a subject, like how French would be a subject in America. And then, or you can like study in an English medium school where you study everything in English and um, Bangla is as a, is a subject. And then there's like a, like a kind of like a hybrid in the middle where you study all the Bengali like govern, government books in English and then you have Bangla as a subject. It's pretty confusing, but it's like, you know, just ha having it in different languages. Um, yeah, so that's like a difference I thought about as like a structural difference we have. Okay, now to the good bit. I'm so excited about this part. Um, so the family and community. So um, like I said, I was super lucky and I got placed in Hawaii. Um, I lived on the big island. So that's not the island where like all the touristy and the movie stuff filmed, not that one. Um, so, um, okay, so starting here. So this was my, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but on the left, um, the man over there, that's Terry. He was my coordinator. And on the right here uh, with the three people, I'm, that's me on the right. And in the middle is my host mom, Ginny. And I was super lucky. And I also had a host sister from Turkey and she was also an exchange student. So we were the same age. Our birthdays are actually like a couple of days apart. Um, and yeah, we did a lot of stuff together. Um, and yeah, my coordinator and my host mom were so helpful. They helped us set up a lot of things in the community. And on top right here, as you can see, there's my host sister again and me. And those are the rest of the exchange students. Um, so there's someone from Armenia, Thailand, Ukraine, Palestine. And they were just like my squad <laughs> when I was on exchange. It was super great. Um, Okay, I think I'm going to show you a couple more photos now because I cannot get over them. I'm always like showing people my exchange year. So this is when we went to visit a local church and uh, we got dressed up. And this is this friend of mine is also Muslim. So we had like a blast thinking about how we're like two Muslims in America dressing up like in a church wearing like church clothes. Um, and then um, this is us just on the island. We were lucky to have a couple of trips. Um, that American councils organized. Uh, we had some orientations and just, you know, getting to know each other. Um, and this is my host sister and me volunteering. We volunteered at a triathlon um, and it was so cool. It was just so cool. That's like, but that's like a whole other story. So I won't go there. Um, yeah, okay. So exchange was 10 months long and it was, it went so fast, but also there was so much in it but it was like not enough. It's, it's a weird feeling. Um, but I did have some really big takeaways from exchange that, you know, two years later, I'm still thinking about exchange. I'm still talking about exchange. I'm doing presentations on exchange. Um, first of all, I think one of the things I learned I took away from my exchange was um, breaking down walls. So whenever we, when so the, a group of us went from Bangladesh to America. So first, one of the first questions they asked us was, were like, was like, um, so what do you think it's going to be like? Um, and I think we had a lot of preconceived notions of what America is going to be like and, you know, all that stuff. Um, and I think when, once I went on exchange, I learned that, and it, it wasn't, it's not good or bad, but it's just that you have to like break down those, any preconceptions you might have 
you have to like keep it, you have to keep an open mind to things, right? It's um, things never turn out the way you expected. You can't predict what's going to happen. Um, and I think exchange really, it's one thing to just talk about it, but in practice, it's really different. And exchange really just like drill that into me. And it's just made me so much more, um, it's just made me like so much more open-minded. Um, so even when now, when I'm like in Canada and I'm meeting new people, um, I'm always like keeping an open mind that people might be from different backgrounds and, you know, what can I, how can we talk in a way that's productive and I can like understand more things from them. And I think that open mindedness and that like, um, just being open to like talking to people I got from exchange. Um, and experience was like another big thing that I took away from exchange. I got to try so many things, like a, like that photo, I volunteered at a triathlon. I volunteered for over a hundred hours while I was on exchange during those months. Um, I lived in a family that was like non-conventional in Bangladesh, right? So there was like a single mom and then me and my um, exchange uh, sister. So we were like the kids. Um, I got to meet so many different types of people. And even just like, for example, like my exchange sister, she's from Turkey. And so we're both Muslims. But just because we grew up in different cultures in different countries, there was so much I learned from her. And even just like when we talked about our religions or like just like the small things about living together, I just learned so much. And I think like, and I think it's just so like I can implement that even now in so many different areas of my life. Like I learned how to live with a roommate from her and now I live with like roommates in university. Um, and we're from like three different places. and. Um, and yeah, there's just so much like <laughs> exchange, volunteering, um, setting up like how to set up um, presentations, how to talk to people, how to um, get through to people, like going over those like social boundaries. Um, it doesn't matter if you're older, if you're younger, if you're, you know, if you're into some kind of music that I don't know, just being like, you know, just being able to experience that through the people I met during exchange. Um, yeah, and um, and even like even like the experience I got on exchange, I actually use now. Like um, I applied for a job recently, and I got it because I I listed down a lot of things I did during exchange, and they thought it was super cool, so they brought me on the team and super cool stuff. Um, the last thing is probably my favorite part: um, a better me, not a new me. A lot of people do think about like going on exchange, like oh, I'm gonna reinvent myself. But I just, I, that's just not what happened with me. I was like, you know, I'm going to learn stuff. And I did. We're all just trying to be good people with like, you know, the tools we have and with everything going on around the world. And when you go on exchange, you see like a lot of people coming from different backgrounds. Like they might come from a place where there's a lot of um, cultural or like political turmoil going on now. But then you see people just like striving despite all that. And it's really motivating. And I've always been interested in culture, thus me applying for the program. But um, Exchange really um, helped me get on the ground and experience what it's like, um, just building all those relationships and um, just, you know, trying all those new things, being able to step out of my comfort zone. Um, so now I'm studying, for example, now I'm studying global and international studies. So I'm meeting a lot of people from all over the world. Um, and yeah, exchange really just helped me get a start on that, I think. And it's just made me so much of a better person, a, a better person who could really deal with everything that, um, and like, you know, enjoy it too. Not just like, oh, let's do, get it over with or anything, but I like enjoy talking to new people, enjoy being in new social um, situations. And also like, if I don't know something about another culture, now I have the confidence to ask them like, hey, I don't really know about this. Can you tell me more about it? Can you like explain it to me? And it's totally okay that I don't know. And like exchange really prepped for me, prepped uh, me for that. Um, yeah, okay, I totally went off. Um, <laughs> so um, as I was saying about my, you know, su totally supportive community, um, I still talk to my host mom like every month. We get on the phone, talk for hours. We talk about all the shows. Um, we watch together and we're still keeping up on separately and we discuss everything. And even my sister, uh, my host sister, my sister, I call her my sister basically. Um, 
she actually, um, fun fact, my sister has a lot of siblings like back in Turkey and they still contact me. Her siblings contact me. They con they're like one of the first ones to comment whenever I post a pic on Instagram. They don't know a lot of English, but um, they Google translate things like, like really sweet comments and they will post it. And it's just so cool seeing that they're making that effort to connect to me. Um, yeah, and I'm still in contact with other exchange students, of course, you know, as social media. And um, I'm also in contact, contact actually with people from my country. So there were like 26 of us who went from Bangladesh to America and we were in different states, but even with them, they totally share my um, perspective on a lot of things. They get what I get. We all had this shared experience, right? So they're still like one of some of the closest people I have right now. Um, and yeah, so it's really cool that even besides, you know, just having my family and friends, um, I still have this like whole new set of family and friends that are just there to like cheer me on, support me. If I ever need anything, I know they're there and it's just super great. Yeah. Um, so a couple more photos um, just because they're fun. The one on the right is like the last day my sister was leaving and this um, my our friend was leaving. So we were super sad, but we were also super happy. Um, yeah, it was, it was just great. Um, and yeah, so I think that's it. I think this just kind of felt like me talking about my exchange, which I guess it was. Um, but these are my socials. If there, you guys have any questions about me, my country, or my exchange experience, I'm always down to talk about it. I might talk too much about it, so like beware. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, and this is some of the contact information for American Councils and um, Guest Program. And, yeah, thank you so much for, you know, listening to me today and tuning in. Thank you. Awesome. That was super interesting. Thank you. Um, my first question, because I have a few, is what was, think back to when you first got your, like, placement notification and you found out that you're <laughs> going to Hawaii, which is obviously way different than any other state you could have been placed in. What did you think? Um, so, little backstory, I didn't get my placement until, like, uh, two weeks before I flew out so I didn't even know what I was packing for I was super stressed because I was like when do I get my placement oh, most of my friends already have their placements um but it was like wow like I just especially with Hawaii you have so many preconceived notions right like Hawaii's oh, gonna be like this vacation place um but yeah it was super cool um my host mom got in touch with me right away um um, like American Council's first um, emailed me and then my host mom emailed me and she was so great. She also had experience being a local coordinator. So she had like all the information I needed prepped right away. So she told me about like what the weather might be like, what I might need and um, what like uh, what to expect on the flights and everything. So she was super helpful with that. Um, and yeah, of course I was psyched. <laughs> Does anyone else have questions? I have a question. Hi. Hi. Um, thank you for your presentation. It was so informative and um, just really great to hear about your experience. Um, so I just, I'm curious if you and your host sister have visited each other since your exchange or plan to visit one another in your home country? Um, yes, actually, we had, the, we actually, well, we didn't do it yet. We actually had a plan um, last summer. My host sister was supposed to come here and my host mother was going to come up from Hawaii and we were going to reunite here. Um, we were going to drive up to Quebec and, um, you know, go around Montreal and stuff, go on some road trips, but unfortunately it didn't happen. Um, but we did, we didn't cancel it. We just put it on hold until when it's safe enough for us to do all that. Is she back in Turkey or did she go to another country? Um, she is back in Turkey, yes. Um, she's uh, doing her university there. And um, I went back to, um, yeah. So I had a, I, yeah, I had to kind of move around because of my dad's job, but um, now I'm in Canada. I'm not in Bangladesh anymore, just studying too. Um, Alif, you are the 2017, 2018 program year, right? Yes. So I started working on the YES program kind of partway through 2018. So there's a very good chance we somewhere saw each other at the airport when you were departing. Oh my God, totally could be. <laughs> During those very exciting, you know, end of stay orientations and mm -hmm. 
Um, so my question is, were there any aspects of, I guess you could, depending on how you want to answer the question, either aspects of Bangladeshi culture that you brought and shared with your host family or your host community, um, something that was, you know, different than what you experienced in your host community that you really enjoyed, or, or maybe just something that was really different that you, a tradition or a daily routine that was something that you would normally do back home in Bangladesh, that when you came to the US you didn't have and you wanted to share it, or I guess even vice versa, an American tradition that you experienced um, in Hawaii that you brought back to Bangladesh when you returned? Mm -hmm. um, so um, I don't think there was anything like regular that I brought back, but I did um, from Bangladesh, I did bring some like um, ornaments and things for my host, um, host family and like the house that I know are still up because when I video call my mom, I can, uh, my host mom, I can see them in the background. Um, but yeah, but it's more just like, we just talked so much. My host, um, my host family, we had this traditional tradition, which I actually love now and which I'm implementing in my household with my roommates. Um, we used to sit on the lanai, like the veranda at five to 6 p.m. And we would have like a one solid hour of just like talking about what happened during the day. And when I was in Hawaii, that became such a tradition for us. And then that's where most of like the cultural exchange, talking about cultural values, talking about um, just like having like a very open and candid conversation about what like what's so, like social uh, so um, like what so um, society expects from you in my in Bangladesh versus in USA or like um, how pr people might be different across uh, across cultures um, all that happened in Hawaii when we were like talking before dinner in those times and then I think that was like such a good um, it was such a safe space to talk. And I learned so much during those times, just talking to my host mom and my host sister. Um, and now whenever, like whichever home I am in, like with my normal parents or like here with my roommates, um, I'm, I kind of make sure to have like a time during, maybe not every day since we're busy, but every week to have a time where you can sit down and kind of talk about um, our experiences, um, different cultures that we're from. And yeah, I think that's what I brought from Hawaii to here in my life now. Thanks. I also was gonna say, oh my gosh, I can't omit. Do you remember what the time difference between where you were in Hawaii and back home? It was 16 hours, yes. Wow. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, the like scheduling calls was like <laughs> a task. Does anyone else have, have questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Uh, I very much enjoyed your presentation, Aleve. I don't get to hear uh, about very many Yes countries since I primarily work on the FLEX program, so it was really wonderful to hear about Bangladesh. Um, just a question about your host mother. Were you and your host sister her first time hosting, or had she hosted before? Or I'll just let you answer. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> she's been hosting for like 15 years, I think, or more. Um, and um, she's also been local coordinator for that amount of time. She also hosted today every year. Apparently, she says she's not going to host anymore because it's been like so long, but then she ends up hosting anyway because she just loves it. I know she loves it. Um, and yeah, that's yeah. And um, she's actually in very good contact with a lot of the exchange students she hosts. She'll like she'll um, every year she'll have a trip planned to some different country just visit, visiting an old um, exchange student. That's so wonderful to hear. Thank you yeah. for sharing. I have a question. Uh, when you think about International Education Week, when you were in Hawaii, or just other times when you were trying to share things about your country and your culture with your community, what did you find um, easy to share and what was kind of more challenging to, to make your host family and community understand? Um, some of the easiest things to share was like how connected both our countries are, even though we might not know it. So I had this fun thing I did where um, whenever, wherever I would present, I would tell them to look at their clothes tags because Bangladesh has a huge garments industry and we import a lot of like H&M Forever 21 clothes. Um, so it's super popular, right? So I'd, and then there'd always be at least one person in every room that had like a made in Bangladesh tag. And I was like, hey, there you go. That's your connection, man. Um, so that was super great. Um, um, for hard things, I think it would be like 
maybe like food, you know, like they know it's like an Indian cuisine and it's like spicy and stuff, but there's just like so much food that I would want people to try, but not being able to just like make everything for them. So it's like a struggle. <laughs> Any other questions from anyone? Awesome. I just want to thank you again for taking time out of your day to, to talk to us and do a presentation. We love hearing from our alumni. Um, mm -hmm. This is really interesting. And I love hearing what you're up to now and that you still talk to Ginny. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for inviting me. I love talking about it in my exchange year. So anyone willing to hear, we'll hear about it. <laughs> okay, well, bye everyone. Thank you.